Hello there, friends. It's Simone. I'm here to share my currently inked pens for the month of January with you. Um, I call it loosely January because it's not um, fixed to January 1st through January 31st. It is about a four week um, time period where I use these 10 pens. And um, whenever I ink them up, the in during the month and share the video that's why it's called january so i am embarking on a project called project ink down this month there should be a video where i explain more in detail about what it is um i have pinked five inks from my sample box and um then i picked the carryover pens. I picked pens for the inks that I picked fresh. And this is how I came up with these 10 pens. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to tell you quickly, this was a surprise to me. This is a carryover from the ink vent calendar. It is a pilot parallel with a 1.5 millimeter nib and it is inked with diamine astral that was on from day 20 is a sh i think it's a chameleon ink and it has a gold green shimmer it's a basically it looks very black to me at least under the shimmer that's what it looks like the second pen that i have inked is a f um ink down ink and pen combination um it's diamine walnut that was day 15 from the ink vent but i just inked it yesterday with in put it into the pilot custom 823 the next ink that i picked from project ink down was caramel however uh, after i had inked and wiped off the excess there was slime involved so i quickly emptied out the ink from the pen, I rinsed it well. I used an ultrasonic cleaner with it um, in order to ensure that it wasn't anything wrong with the ink. It didn't look like it when I dumped it down the drain, but just to be sure, I took that out of the disqualified this ink and used one of my ink bottles, which is Robert Oster Coffee Date. It is a similar color, but not the same absolutely not and then so that i put in the benu ambrosia brown orchid with a medium nib then i uh, put my sick medium nib from franklin christoph on the asterbrook st in c glass and i put Emero de chevoir by j urban into the pen that is another ink down then in the Twisby, I inked that on day three of the ink vent, early dusk. It's a 1.1 stub nib and I really enjoyed this pen, so I decided to carry it over. Um, here's two different swatches of Troublemaker Abalone. I received two different samples from two friends and I just wanted to show how different the, they are. They're not as different on camera, but this one is more purple and this one is more teal. And I put that into the uh, Shown Design Ultim with a Monarch Medium Nib. The Sailor King of Pen with a Broad Nib is carried over from Day 8 of the Ink Vent. Then I have the Pelican M800 with a Fine Nib inked with Diamine Raise a Glass. So that was inked on December 25th. And then I, uh, another project ink down ink, I have, it's, it is Pilot Eroshizuku Tsutsuji. I swapped the nib on the Scarlet as well. And this is a nib that was gifted to me by my friend uh, Shana from Serial Nana. And she uh, had this made by Shibui North. It says Simone, and there is a YouTube button down here. This is a fine flex nib. I have never used that pen. I think it's more 
It's less flex, more, more soft or elastic. We'll see, I have never used it, so we'll figure it out. I found it interesting that when I put this away, I saw this card when I pulled that out and they're really similar colors. However, this is much better behaved and more complex. So if you're looking for an ink that looks similar, check out Pilot Irushizuku Tsutsuji. And the last ink is another carryover. This was one of my favorite inks of Project um, of Diamond Inkvent, Moonbeam Day 9 in the um, Gravitas pocket with the San Francisco show nib in a broad. And I'm going to show writing samples with you right now. I just wanted to show you what my ink journal looks like so far, um, just so that you get an idea on how I document this. So I made a title page. I don't know if I continue decorating it, but this is where 2024 is going to start. This is uh, what I have at the beginning of 2024, my inky goals. As you can see, I do not have any pen or ink purchase limits. I am trying a different approach this year. Um, then I have formulated the arbitrary rules for Project Inkdown. This is subject to change as soon as I realize that I don't enjoy doing this anymore. And then I want to do one more exploration every month, four weeks. We'll see how this works out, uh, which is pens from my pen case. So I, I put that in the beginning so that I can refer back to it every time. And then we're starting in January. Here are the inks that were picked um randomly from my project ink down box here are the contenders for carryover pens then i when i picked i just wrote what ink i want to put in which pen and then i decided i would have a test and thoughts page here as well i used to have this in a different notebook but i want to have everything in one book so i can look through this again at the end of the year and refer back to it so once I inked it, I just scribbled here and I I would have never picked this ink. These definitely up here, I would have never picked these colors, but just those five look so nice together. Then here are some thoughts. This is what I already sold, given away in January. And so I'm going to fill this page and then start here with um, figuring out... Um, or documenting each pen and ink combination. That I haven't figured out just yet. Um, I'm going to document a list of currently inked for these videos every month in my Rodia notebook. This is spiral bound and the paper is removable. And then um, again, I can flip through this and see how it changed, how my thoughts, how I felt. I don't know if this is necessary. I just do this for YouTube and to have a different writing experience on a different paper. So eight minutes in, let's start. I need to set this up differently. All right, so I am going to put the title up here with this it's still not very accessible. This looks good. I need a pencil board. I have a letter holder on my desk and I, because I keep losing my writing boards, I decided that everything that I find everywhere, I'm just going to stick in here and every time I need a new one, I'll just pull it out and then hopefully this will be a good way to have them, um, to find one every time I need one. I was not so sure about this ink at all, but it's really dark and I very much like how, uh, how dark and bold this is, 2024. And then I'll just put here, Randomly inked. 
Okay, so the first pen that I have inked, I just talked about this. This is um, Diamine Astral, and I I like um, using the Rhodia paper because you can really see how the ink shades. So Diamine Astral. I do not do much with this. You can see it, sometimes it doesn't really, it for some reason it write, it's supposed to write on the the edge right here, pilot, parallel, but I have found that I had three inked in December, 1.5 millimeter. It works better and worse on some of the inks, uh, on some of the pens, and uh, most of the time it's only one of the tips here that write. Um, I cleaned out all of my pens that I had inked in December yesterday after I had made the decision on what to carry over and which pens to um, ink up, and these Pilot Parallels cleaned out really nicely. The next pen I said it before is the Pilot Custom 823 with Diamine Walnut. And every time I use this ink, I am very much uh, enjoying the experience. Um, I like how the color complements the pen. This definitely was a... I missed this pen. I haven't used it in a while. But this looked like it would be a great fit. So I know I always say that diamond walnut um, pilot custom 823 with a medium nib. This is the amber colorway and it's it's a back filler. That's why I opened the valve so I didn't would so it wouldn't stop writing. Um, I really miss this and I, I'm i enjoying having it back inked. I always say that I don't match um, pens with inks. That is true, but I also am not opposed to matching. If, if it just so happens that it works out, I'm not anti-matching, but I'm also not pro-matching, if that makes sense. This is the, the ink that I'm actually thinking of letting go. I still have like half a bottle left, but I have never really enjoyed writing with this ink and I have given away a lot of samples as well. There are other yellow ochres or yellow browns that I prefer. So um, when the Papier Plume Caramel was slimy, I decided to check my ink bottle drawer if I had an ink that was similar and I picked this one because that would then help determine um, Bailey Ambrosia if I if this really needs to stay in my collection. I'm not necessarily trying to de-stash all the things but especially with inks that I purchased in the beginning as bottles, there are quite some bottles that I would not purchase again. Um, in contrary to pens, where I say that uh, there is no pen that I would never purchase again, because they all informed where I'm at right now, with inks, I am now purposely missing out on those where you cannot have purchased a sample just so that I don't end up with 30, 40, 50, 80 milliliters of ink that I don't enjoy. This is, as I said, the um, Estabrook SD in sea glass, and I put in my Franklin Christoph with a SIG medium nib. 
maybe you got a glimpse of my thoughts. I am strongly considering selling my two Franklin Christoph Model 2 pens. Um, one I purchased, J. L. Baum, Emerald de Chivoire. Um, and so I want to see how this pen, how this nib performs in other pens. So it is the, so of course, Esther Brook Esty in sea glass. I would either sell it without a nib, sea medium, or um, give you a nib that I have, a spare Yuvo nib that I have. But yeah, if you're interested in, in my Franklin Christoph pens, let me know. I really like, I, I didn't bond with this ink when I swatched it. Um, I felt that Wearing Ghoul Wayfarer was much more pleasant, but I do really like how this ink looks in this nib especially, so I can't wait to, to use this more. I do have quite a few stubby nibs in this uh, rotation as well. Um, like the Diamond Astral, I want to see how useful this is going to be for me in a regular ink rotation and not in a uh, setting where I ink up a pen with the ink vent um, and just write a tiny snippet. And so, like, how can I make this a good use of this pen with this nib? in my regular everyday fountain penning. Same with this one. This one is, I can't even tell you what makes this ink so special to me. Um, if you've ha heard me talk about this ink before, then it is no surprise that I called this ink very boring in the beginning. It was, I think, day three of the ink vent, and there were quite... The way it started, to me, it looked boring. And I, if you're, if you're new here, then you don't know. But if you've been with me, you know that I opened it up the minute I received it. I swatched all the inks. I shared a, a first look at it. Um, and then I put it all back and opened up, opened it up every day. And I knew that there were inks coming at a later day that I would enjoy. Um, but when I went through every day, I really loved the first day, which I didn't like at all when I swatched it at first. I really liked this day three. And this one is a 1.1 stub nib. And maybe it's because I didn't have so such big expectations of this uh, ink. But yeah, I, I love how it shades and I can't wait to use this in my journal. Haven't journaled in oh um, almost over a month now. I can see that there are quite a few blue inks. This is not posting well. That is the only, uh, even though it's supposed to post well and I'm not concerned about this scratching up or anything, it doesn't, which annoys me because it's kind of short and posted but this wobbly posting experience doesn't make me happy either it doesn't post deeply enough so just gonna put this here however this nib makes me incredibly incredibly happy this is troublemaker abalone and i have heard that this is a very dry ink which it probably is but I think this is probably the reason why I purchased this Monarch nib so I can use and be surprised by some of those dry inks that I haven't been able to enjoy so far. Abalone. And on my paper, 
it looks very teal leaning it on camera it definitely looks more blue than purple as well and then this is the shown design autumn with a monarch medium nib so that's the next one i have four more to go i at the end of december beginning of january after i had filmed my um 12 days of inks I was so overwhelmed with all the pens that I wasn't able to journal at all. I didn't know what pens to pick. So I'm very excited that I finally started this 2024 project uh, because I feel like it's contained now and I can pick, um, I have less choices to make. And so maybe I'll get back into Jaka. Mm -hmm. This is called Jacaranda. And so hopefully the journaling will come back. This is the Sailor King of Pens with a broad nib. This is still on loan from Nadia. Um, and the pen is, I told you just now, Sailor King of Pens in black very basic and i actually really like that about this pen um the jacaranda is a chromo shading purple blur pull ink which i'm very excited to use because it's one of those first inks the firsts where it's actually legible it flows well out of this pen in this pelican m800 with a fine nib, I have Raise a Glass, which is a very dark purple with a gold sheen and a green gold uh, chameleon shimmer. Didn't think I would like this ink as much as I do in this pen, and uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this inked or not, but I decided to keep it inked um, because this pen feels like it's going to stay in my collection for a while and so I will have lots of opportunity to ink it up with other inks and so I'm just going to experience this for a little while longer. I also really like how this purple and the green uh, contrast each other. I contacted Estherbrook about the problems that I had with the section of this Scarlet Estherbrook Esty, and they sent me a new section and now I can swap around the nibs as I please. So I'm going to just go really slow and see what, what this nib actually does. It's definitely wet. That's, uh, well, I mean, Hiroshizuku inks by Pilot I often quite wet. So I don't really see any flex, but I, it's, it's a little bit bouncy. Maybe it helps lay down a little bit more ink when it's bouncing. So there is some shading. I definitely, it's lighter up here. Does it feel like a fine nib? Not really. Uh, Tsutsuji. Tsutsuji. And this one is the Esther Brook. SD in scarlet with a fine. Uh, I think they call them flex, but I don't really know that that's true. Or I'm just not able to to really use this. I'm usually a very fast writer and I have a hard time going slow. So I, I have seen many people use flex nibs and they go extremely slow. That's really hard for me. But I really like this color of ink. Uh, yeah, next one is the last one. 
well, okay, let me agitate this. Maybe we can see some of the shimmer. Um, I'm not really needing the shimmer inks to come out, the shimmer to come out in these inks. If there is specks of shimmer scattered around, that is fine for me. Um, but I just really like how this ink shades, Moonbeam and uh, Gravitas. This pocket. Um, I know that they also had a, an orange Dalrin material. I'll still call it that because it's the only one, the only pen that I have in that material. And this is a broad nib. Yeah. So these are all the pens and inks that I have for the month of January. I will be back. I don't really know when with an update on how this experiment is going what I like and don't like about the pens and inks that I combined with each other. And then um, I'll see you soon. Until then, bye.